Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 36. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, and this is the third file for this chapter 5, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, this is a binomial chart, and we saw how to create this. But I want to see how to do this. Notice, I'm asking the question, what's the probability of getting two or fewer x values in our binomial experiment. This happens to be a getting stuck in traffic example. But here, here's the 2. I want to be able to change this to 3. And notice the chart is changing. And then 4. And not only have the chart light up, but over here in the legend show the probability. So right now, the question is, what's the probability of getting stuck in traffic over a 15-day period? two or fewer times. There's the visual, there's the probability. So we want to see how to do this not only for less than or equal to, but we're going to see how to create this chart on the upper end and even between. Now let's go over to this sheet right here. Our experiment in class, we did uh, West Seattle Bridge at a probability of 0.15. This is Highway 99, which has a much higher probability of getting stuck in traffic in the morning. And we're going to ask the question over the next 15 working days, what's the probability of getting stuck in various x values? So here's our inputs right here. We're going to create our data set here. And we're going to use binome.dist function. So the number of successes, well, we go from 0 times stuck in traffic all the way to 15 times stuck in traffic in 15 tries, comma, the trials. That's up here. F4 to lock it, comma, the probability of success on any one try, F4 to lock it, comma, and cumulative, 0, because we're calculating the exact probability for this one x. Control Enter and copy it down. The total is 1. It looks like we're good to go. I'm going to create the initial chart like this. There are our horizontal axis x values. These are the heights of the columns. I go up to Insert, Column columns. It'll guess wrong. I click on the columns for blue because the chart is totally misinterpreting these. It doesn't know these need to be down here in the horizontal axis. So I highlight them and delete. I immediately right click, select data. This is the most important dialog box in charting. I want to edit the horizontal axis. There it is. It's giving me the opportunity to highlight 0 to 15. Click OK. Click OK. I'm going to click on the chart title, equal sign, and I'm going to scroll up and click in G4. So that equal sign shot me up here. I clicked right there. When I hit Enter, now that chart title is linked to the label. I'm going to leave the legend here. Uh, maybe I'll move it later, but I definitely want to add some axis title. So I'm going to click the plus and then the checkbox. Right here, I'm going to say, instead of equal sign, I'm just going to type P, open parentheses, X, close parentheses. You can see the outline was solid. And when I was typing, it didn't appear here. It appeared up here. But when I hit Enter, boom, it goes right there. The horizontal axis, I'm going to type equal sign and very carefully scroll up and click on A11 and Enter. There's our random discrete variable. Let's calculate the probability up here first, and then we'll create the extra data points that we need to color our chart. So if you remember, this is less than or equal to. All the distribution functions go from whatever the smallest up to whatever. And we have a 3x value you put in and cumulatively adds them up if we use a 1 in the final argument. So I'm going to say equals binome dist. The particular successes in this case is 3, comma, trials, comma, probability. And not 0 for individual value. I want cumulative. Remember, if I put a 3, it goes from the bottom all the way to the 3. Close parentheses. And there's the probability. Now, we've done that before in class. But in order to plot this, we actually have to create an extra column here. So I'm going to build this as a dynamic label, because I want my legend to reflect the operator and whatever x value I put here. So watch this. Equals, and this is a text formula. So in double quotes, I'm going to put probability, open parentheses, x less than or equal to n double quote. Right now, this is a ridiculous formula. It's just some text, enter, right? F 
2. But now I need to join that to this 3. If I enter this right now, it's one, two things being joined. But that's not the end of it. F2, I need to add one more thing. In double quotes, close parentheses, and double quote, and enter. So that will be dynamic. If I change this to 2, my label and the legend will totally update. So I'm going to change this back to 3. Now the trick is, is you need data points for charts. And for this one, I want all of these, less than or equal to 3. Everything else down here needs to be empty. So I'm going to use the if function, because for each one of these cells, I need to put one of two things. I either need to put the probability like in all of these cells, or down here, I need nothing. One of two things. And when I change this, it needs to totally update. So that's the perfect use for the if function, equals if. The reason we use if is there's some logical test that will determine true or false, what to put in the cell if it's true, and what to put in the cell if it's false. So our test is simple. Is the x value relative cell reference? Are you less than or equal to 3? F4. Now notice the logical test comes out what? True here. Is 1 less than or equal to 3? True. True, true. Is 4 less than or equal to 3? False, all the way down. So comma, we're going to get a series of trues and false for that argument. But now the rest of the if is just what do you want to put in the cell if it comes out true? Boom, I want the probability, comma. What do you want me to put in the cell if it's false? That means I'm past the 3. We're going to put in a special 0 length text string, double quote, double quote. It is actually text, but we're not going to put anything in it. That'll show up as an empty, and that will instruct the chart to show nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and I'm going to copy it down. This is amazing. Watch this. Boom. There it is. The only three values we need. Now if I change this to 2, you've got to be kidding. If I change this to 6, just like that, and this is updating, and this is updating. Now I'm going to include a label up here, equals, and click right there, Enter. Change this back to 3. And now the magic of charting usually comes from right click, select data. We need to not edit this, but add a new series. Series is the name we give for numbers. And there it is. That's going to show up in the legend whenever you put series name. The name goes in the legend. Now, this is a tricky thing, and we've actually seen this in earlier in the class. You have to highlight this and delete it. Make sure it's completely gone, and now you simply highlight the numbers. And OK. OK. We need to adjust the overlap. I'm going to click on any one of these and right click Format Data Series or Control 1. This opens up series overlap. Earlier in the class, we did gap width for histograms. Here, I'm going to slide this all the way over to 100% overlap and close it. You've got to be kidding me. Is that it? We still have to fix this, but I'm going to put this on the side over here. So I selected it and right click Format Legend or Control 1. And now I want to say something like, let's try it on the right. Does that look good? No, no, here, let's try it on the top. Yeah, I kind of like that. You can put it where you want. All right, now we have one. Well, let's see if this works. Four. Oh, that is beautiful. Five. If you didn't like the color, let's try this. I'm going to click right there, Control-1, or right click, Format, uh, Series. Let's go to the fill. I'm going to say something like solid and make it really loud, red. Oh, look at that. Let's close this. Maybe that's too bright. I don't know. Three. And just like that, this is starting to look amazing. Now, the next thing we want is we want the, so right there, I want it equals and whatever the number is. So click in the cell F2. Oh, we can just backspace to get rid of that double quotes, space, equal sign, space, and double quote, if I enter, enter this right now, it just shows the equal sign. But F2, and I need to join this to that cell. Shift 7 and click on that cell. Now it's going to be totally crazy, right? Because Excel shows up to 15 significant digits. Maybe you want that. Maybe that's totally beautiful. Maybe you don't. F2, let's round it. 
R-O-U-N-D. They named this function smartly. And comma, you come to the end. 1 would be to the tens position, 2 to the hundred position, and so on. So I'm going to put a 4, and it will hack these off 1, 2, 3, 4, only to the 2, which will show up as 3, because round does our rounding rule. And just like that, that is amazing. 1. So the probability of getting stuck in traffic one or fewer times is about 8%. And there it is, visual. 4 and Enter. The probability of getting stuck four or fewer times is 68%. Now, if we're going to do it on the upper end, it is not too hard. I actually want to copy this sheet over because we only have to change one or two things. Now, I could right click, move or copy. And if you're going to do that, you got to check this and then pick which sheet and click OK. Sometimes that's easier, but watch this. If you can do this, if you click on a sheet and drag, notice I do not let go. See that little arrow, that black arrow? That means I would move it. But now watch this. I'm going to click and drag and see that black arrow. Now look at the little sheet I'm shaking. I don't see a plus, but if you hold Control, now there's a plus. That means I'm not moving it, I'm copying it. now. Let go of your mouse, but not Control, and instantly you've copied it. Now I'm going to double click and call this greater than Enter. All right, so we got to do a few things. i got to first come up here, F2. If we're going to do greater than, remember that's on the upper end. So if I'm putting a 4 in, that means I want 5, 6, 7, all the way up. Well, all the area is 1. This is the area. 4 and smaller. So if I want greater than 4, I take all the area 1 minus that, and boom. Now that gives me the probability. I have this showing up, this showing up, but this formula here is definitely not showing up correctly. Let me fix this first, F2. This now needs to see, say x is greater than, and Enter. So now we have this fixed with our formula. The operators there are fixed for our labels, and now we need to F2. All we need to change is this. Remember, we're asking the question for each one of these x's. Are you something, something compared to this? So I'm going to come up here and say, are you something, something greater than? Control Enter. And now, of course, it's empty here all the way down. you got to be kidding me. Now they're up on the upper end, and there it is. This is just like magic. 6, and instantly I have everything bigger than 6. So now I'm asking the question, what's the probability of getting stuck in traffic more than 6 times? 5.6%. That's how you do it with a chart. Now we want to go look at between, and between is going to be a little bit different. We have our same experiment here. Now we want to go between 3 and 6 and include the 3 and the 6. The way it works with the functions is since the 1 is cumulative, it goes from the bottom all the way to the particular x. If I want from 6 to 3, I'm going to have to get all of 6 and then subtract not 3, but 2. So I'm going to come up here, and I'll include a label here in just a second, equals binome. And I'm going to get successes of 6, comma, the trials comma, the probability of success, comma, and one close parentheses. That gives me everything from 0 up to 6. And I need to subtract from it by known number of success is 3. But remember, subtraction, I need to take all of 6 and not subtract 3. Because 3 is included, I need to subtract 2. So from that 3, I'm going to subtract 1, comma, the trials. 15 comma, the probability 0.25, cumulative 1, close parentheses, control enter. So the probability is 0.7 that we'll get stuck in traffic between 3 and 6 times. Now let's come over here and we're going to do our label equals in double quotes P open parentheses. And I'm going to end double quote and join the lower end. Because if there's a lower and an upper, the x needs to be right in between. So I have just the lower, and I'm going to join to it in double quotes. And I have to have the greater than symbol pointing towards the middle, which is the x. So I say x, and then less than or equal to end double quotes 
ampersand and the 6. If I enter this, you can see the x is definitely in the middle, and it's got to be greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 6. F2. Notice I used the word and there because they both have to be true. Both conditions have to get true. Control Enter. That should be a hint because when we get down to our if, the logical test is not just one test. There's two tests. And luckily, they name functions smartly in Excel. The name of the function, which is a logical function to test whether multiple logical tests come out true, the AND function. This has got to be true, and this other test has got to be true. So I'm going to ask, hey, particular x0, are you greater than or equal to the lower end, f4? And notice the logic of how we put this together is totally different than the logic of this algebraic notation. The x is in the middle here. We have to make sure that we're looking. That's a particular x right there. And if it's going to be included here, it has to be bigger than or equal to this 3. So the, the logic works for this logical one here, slightly different than our notation. We then come and type a comma to get to the next logical. I have to ask another question of the same x. But now I have to say, are you less than or equal to the upper end on our interval f4? Close parentheses. That and function will only deliver a true when it gets down to this one, this one, this one, and this one. Notice for any one of these x's here, this 4, it's both greater than or equal to 3, true, and it's less than or equal to 6, true. So now we just comma and the value of true, our probability. Otherwise, our zero length text string, double quote, double quote. Close parentheses, Control, Enter and copy it down. Now we can do our same trick as earlier. If I highlight this and look down at the status bar, I better get the same exact thing as this up here. Now I just need to plot this. Right click, select data, the most powerful feature in charting. I need to add. Luckily, it asks for the series name. How cool is that? We have a dynamic label that's going to be in the legend. Highlight and be sure to delete that little equal sign, array 1, delete key. And then highlight all of your numbers. Click OK. Click OK. That is amazing. Look at that. And you could change it to whatever color you want. Control 1, fill bucket, solid. That red is a little bit too loud. I'm going to choose something like uh, this green right here. Oh, that's much better. I should have done that on an earlier chart. Now I'm going to close this. Hey, I'm going to click on this Control-1. I need to go over to Series down here. There's way too many decimals there. Now notice, I think it's pulling the, from over here, but uh, I'm just going to use this. And instead of a 6 right down here, I'm going to put 2 tab. And that's much better. Probably should go fix that on the other chart. Ah, but we still have one last thing to fix. Let's click in the label F2, backspace, and then a space, equal sign, space, N double quote, ampersand, and we got a round. I'm rounding this, and you can comma whichever number of decimals you want. I want to see four, close parentheses, and Enter. I can't believe that. Look at how cool that is. And we got the greens and blues going on. So now I could say between 2 and 6, between 2 and 5. There it is. It's totally dynamic. It's picking up our probabilities. Let's go back over here. Look at that. Control-1, that is chart junk. I'm going to come down here and change this to 2 and Enter. Did I do it on all of them? I sure did. Control-1. Right, I heard some of you saying while you were watching this, man, get rid of the chart junk. Let's get rid of that chart junk. To and Enter. All right, so we saw how to create a dynamic chart where the columns for the cumulative probability are showing up, how to create a legend that's linked not only to this cool label, this is a text formula, but we also you saw how to use the if function, single condition less than or equal to, a single condition greater than, and we even did this awesome and so we could do between. All right, we'll see you next video.